we are going to disconnect our gas first. Yep. And the gas, we've got a gas valve up here. And so we've already shut it off. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the gas being on down here, but we need to close it off at the source. So now yep. I'm going to grab some tools. Uh, and actually this one. So we've got gas off up there. So now this is a compressor compression fitting yep. that Austin taught me about. And so we actually loosen that one first yep. right here. And that lets this piece pivot. So that should be enough, right? Yep, yep, absolutely. Okay. And so and you're gonna smell a little bit of gas, which is normal. Um, there's there's always gonna be just a little bit trapped in this pipe here. So if you smell it, it's okay. We got the okay. valve off. There we go. Do we need to worry about the pressure? Nope. No, nope. pressure's real low. Um, as far as I understand, it's about five pounds. Um, but uh, yeah, he's, he's not even going to hear any hissing coming from the pipe at all. Smell a little bit of gas. Yep. So we're taking off this little side branch so we can actually spin it next to the tank, remove this pipe, otherwise this would be banging against it. We're going to see if we can get away with not using channel locks on this valve because they've, it's got some teeth marks on it from before. Let's see. Steve, what we always do in the gas, addressing the dome is, is super important. Nice. Uh, we want to make sure we're safely capping off that gas line, which he's working on right now. Take that. Thing. Just doing a smell check on the valve. So we're putting some pipe thread compound on this plug so that we're going to plug it. So that if anybody ever accidentally opens the valve, gas still doesn't get through. Yep. Oh, sorry. I already got... It's messy stuff. Got the stuff on the rim. But and all you really need is, is the, the, uh, the compound to seal with gas. Gas is so low pressure that we don't need to tape and dope. You can just do the, do okay. the one. So now I was going to plan on trying to remove this flue and like I said before, since this has been off for a while, the gas has been off, it's not hot, but it can get plenty hot. There we go. So, so just pull it up and out. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, so what we got gonna is... Unscrew this? Yep. Yep. So it's attached to the chimney liner and then they kind of sleeved it into another piece of pipe. So. Yeah, we're gonna want to just okay. screw there. So, Austin said there's a chimney liner. Yep. You can see there's flexible pipe in here. So we're gonna unscrew this. You got one Get more back here rotation. too. So. We've got a quarter inch bit on here because we knew there was gonna be some I could take sheet metal work. This disqualifies us from DIY because Austin's doing this part. Okay. <laughs> so now. So now you're going to want to hold on to that chimney liner. It might still be kind of stuck on there. There we go. A little bit of everything. Yep. Lots of pipe. 
So now that we've got this chimney line, do we take the sleeve out? Yeah, so this is kind of different than what you normally would see as far as how this is attached. So um, this chimney liner, I mean, we could, we could possibly take this and kind of just scrunch it back into the chimney so we can get our fitting back on here. Okay. Um, that might be the best way to go. This is all attached to the roof if it's, okay. or, or to the top of the chimney if it's done cool. correctly. Um, and so it's old. Do some patching. Mortar. Yeah, so this just might be something that we have to patch up later. Okay. Um, but uh, this can always stay here as just a place for us to put our duct cap. Um, and then yeah. at a later time, if you wanted to, to maybe cut that that uh, flexible duct off and, and then put another cap just, on it there, just seal it from okay. there. Okay. Uh, we could do that as well. Okay. Great. So. Well, it's dusty enough that it looks like rain's not getting in there, so that's good. But uh, what's going to happen is when you get your we're cap on layers. here, it's going to hold this back because we're going to get screws in that cap. Okay. So we can we could test fit the cap now if that's what you want to do. We'll get our cap. Here's our four inch cap. So just test it before we crimp it because you never know how it's going to fit. But see how it's it's almost the same exact yep. width as this. So we're going to want to crimp your cap down. Okay. So we've got our specialty tool. Uh, so it's, it's really important, and you know, maybe that even is one of the more challenging things of the DIY. So how many cuts am I going to put? So it's just going to squeeze down on it. So we're just going to want to, yep, just do it like oh, okay. that. And then now oh, it's yeah, just, just move just your all way around. around. And just kind of make them even all the way around. So it's going to be a lot of crimps. Okay. So you want all of the sides to just kind of squeeze down. My daughter would love this. It's like arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> okay, so maybe Camila, let us know what are you doing now? Crimping the cap because it doesn't quite fit, so it puts some um, crimps in here to, to downsize the size of this cap. Because mm -hmm. it's the same size as the as the the, the vent pipe, there. the duct. Yeah. Last one there. So now we've got a crimped cap, and let's see now, it fits really nicely. Yep, and it should just compress so we're just gonna in. It doesn't have to go in all the way, it's it only going to go in about that far. Now we've got, you, know, you can put your, your, you know, a couple screws in there. Got a lip for screws. These are not yeah, self-tapping. No, yeah, you go. But we'll uh, see. That's all good. <laughs> that's how I go. That's, that's my style is dropping screws. Yep, yeah, hold that other side. That's one. And now, try to sometimes go side. it's hard to get a good angle at this, so you, you yeah. might only want to be able to get one in now and put one in later after the okay. tank's out. Oh, yeah, so that works. I'm going to leave this here with the screw You can see your, your drill's not going to fit up in here, yeah, right? Yeah, but I'll so put one in from below. You can put one in at best here, okay. and then that's all you're going to be able to okay. do. Oh, well, we can spin it. Yeah, yeah, and that's okay because this is actually not attached to the, uh, oh, the chimney right. liner. It's just kind of yeah. sleeved over the top. Okay, so actually we can just finish it now. We'll put it in right here. Um, but Steve, you know, before all of the pollution from the gas water here was going up this beam, right? It's going up into the, in the atmosphere. Um, you know, we see, we see air districts in California are, are phasing out combustion water heaters because of all the knocks that water heaters and furnaces, you know, emit. So now Camila is not, is not going to do that anymore. But talk to us a little bit about, you know, so it's dangerous to, to admit that pollution that outside. I'm not. I'm going to give you a hand here. Also, Thank what you. About, what that, uh, I'm just trying not to. Uh, it helps to have a magnetic bit. Though. Yeah. This one was once magnetic, but I think I've dropped it so many times. have much of a tip. That's a used screw, so it takes a little longer. Okay. So we're good. So we're good on this now. 